Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Avery. I'm 23 years old. I live in the Midwest and my channel is all about my journey with personal finance. So if that's something that interests you, feel free to subscribe. But regardless, thanks for watching. So in today's video, I'm going to do my first ever budget review video for January 2022. Um, so I might be ironing out the kinks here, but I'm going to go ahead and start with my income and then we'll look at my spending for the month. So taking a look here, let's go ahead and close out all of the expenses. That way it's just not, it looks very busy on the screen if you ask me. So let's look at my income. Let me zoom in a bit. So I have a few different income sources. Some of these are just like reimbursements, like Cash App and Venmo. Um, in Venmo, I need to fix the payees on that. I'd rather them just be combined. But I did have Cash App and Venmo reimbursements this month. And then I also had 2160 from Ticketmaster. I had bought some tickets to a show that I wasn't able to attend. So I resold, I was able to sell them for a slight loss, but at least someone else got to see. Um, the show that I planned on attending. All that being said, I had two main sources of income this month. I have my full-time job, so I had two paychecks, so total $2,313.43, and then my restaurant job, $275.56. Um, as far as income this month, it's definitely been, it's definitely a lower income month. It's probably, if we take a look here, since I started using YNAB. Let's do all dates. So, yeah, you can see it's my lowest income month since I started using YNAB, which that's fine. Um, January was a lot. I don't know about you, but it was it was a lot to deal with. Um, I guess you'll see it as I get into my spending report. So I was definitely working less at the restaurant and I was definitely, what's the word? Yeah, I was working less and the pay that I did get was on average less. So less people were uh, going to the restaurant in January, which is fine. It's income just ebbs and flows like that sometimes. And it was nice to have an actual rest from working so much. And then as far as the full-time job, if you take a look here, January is 23-13. December was a three-paycheck month, so it doesn't matter. 23-17, that's probably what I would have gotten in January if they hadn't taxed me for a gift card at my work. Um, in October 24-40, that was, I worked overtime. And you see that in September as well. So my income from my full-time job is really not that different than what it normally is. It's the restaurant job that has made the difference. And if you see in previous months, I also worked, I also work at a bakery. Um, so some months were very lucrative for that, like October. And then I didn't work at all in January because it's just slower. And that's just how it is. So yeah, just to give some context about my income in general, it definitely ebb and flows with the season for my jobs that are not my full-time job. So if we go back into last month, my total income is $2,791.11, so just under $2,800. Um, and then you can see down here that my total expenses exceeded my income, which we'll get into. Um, I would actually like to go ahead and go over to, where is it at? Let, just give me a moment. Is it this one? Yeah. So spending my category. Also, as a side note, I like to use the toolkit reports for this. I just like it better than YNAB's reports. I think YNAB could do a little better with their reporting, but that's just my opinion. Um, something that you'll see here with my income, or no, with my spending breakdown, that you might notice if I, you've watched any of my other budgeting videos is I've actually changed my budget categories. So in my previous videos, you can see that I had very broad budget categories like fixed spending and flexible spending. And I was thinking about that and I realized when I want to do like a video like this, that 
those spending categories make no sense. And once I changed them, I was like, actually, this like report is extremely helpful now that I have the categories set up in a way that makes sense. Like right now, I can see at a glance I've I've spent one six sixty nine ninety four on utilities. That's very good to know if I ever want to reevaluate my utility costs. So, moral of the story is I really like that I updated my categories, and um, I think it's also better to look at as a viewer. So, if that's something, if you like how the categories are set up, just let me know. If you don't like it, just let me know too. It's whatever you want to do. So, taking a look here, my biggest spending category was transportation, and if we click on it, we see that one was for bike maintenance. I actually, what happened is, I bought a bike. <laughs> So it was um, like $1,136. It's quite, I guess that is quite expensive for a bike. I had been saving for the bike for a while, but I had undersaved. I had saved $700 thinking, okay, that'll be good for a good bike for my standards. Then when I went to finally buy the bike, I discovered that there is a... <laughs> Bikes are quite expensive, especially if you're not buying them at Walmart. If you're buying them at like a bike store, specialty bike store, they can get quite pricey. So I went into the bike store and they didn't even have a bike that was less than $700. The, everything was at least like $8.95 and above. So <laughs> you can tell I did not save enough. And I know I could have waited a little longer to buy the bike, but my thought process with it is that in my city, there is like there was a lot of bike shortages last year, and they're still having similar issues this year because of the pandemic. Everyone wants to get a bike. It's great recreation, great activity. That's exactly why I wanted one. It'll be great for exercise. Um, so the price of bikes have gone up just like everything else on the planet and the supply has gone down just like everything else on the planet. So I'm not too upset that I had to spend more money than I had planned on. I just know in the future, I'll just have to aim a little higher for any big savings goals, especially and do a little more research for any that I don't know enough about, such as buying a bike. <laughs> but I love my bike. If I... Can figure out a way to insert a picture I'll insert a picture into the video if not maybe I'll just leave a link down below um, yeah so <laughs> it was expensive I can't wait to use it as soon as it stops snowing outside and it stops being 10 degrees out so hopefully maybe maybe end of February early March and it'll be great because I live by a bike path so I can ride my bike on that path <laughs> and I can um, hopefully maybe even commute to work with it. Um, we'll see in the future. I'm still working from home, but it would be quite nice. So it was 11:36 for the bike. I That was 9.95 for the bike and then taxes added on. And then I had to buy a bike lock because there's no way in hell I want my bike to be stolen after I spent that much money. And I also joined a flat tire club. So the place I bought the bikes through is also a service store. Like they service bikes. So they have a flat tire club. So for $25, I was able to get basically free flat tire replacements. All I have to do is spend that up for $25. So I'm not the most maintenance. I'm not like some big person, handyman if you will. So I thought it was a good deal. So I got it and it's walking distance from my house. So I have easy access to it. If I do have a flat tire, I don't have to drive across the highway to get to that bike store. So I'm really glad about that. So that's <laughs> what blew the budget this month. Cause as you can see here, I'm other in transportation. I only spent I spent, I bought gas one time, $37.67, and I paid about three fifty dollars for parking. So, did really good in my gas budget. It's just the bike budget was um, a bit large. So, I definitely had to move some money around this month to try and cover that expenses. Okay, so enough about that. Let's go back. 
Housing, I spent eight eighty seven, so eight thirty three for rent and water. They're billed together. Twenty eight fifty for laundry. Twenty five seventy nine for household. I bought a plunger. How exciting! Um, laundry, I have to pay in my building, and that's a little more than I normally spend. But I just decided to do more laundry. So it is what it is. I'd rather things be clean than dirty. Um, let's go into sinking funds. Um, it's definitely a very spendy month for me. As you can see here, I spent two seventy four on health, beauty, and clothing. I spent two seventy six on vacation, and I spent a hundred dollars on stuff I forgot to budget for. Health, beauty, and clothing. That's very simple. I got my haircut. So, and I also bought some shoes at Journeys, which I can't believe I did that this month. It already feels. I, January's been so long. It's been so difficult, but <laughs> I bought shoes and I bought I had my hair cut for the first time in a year and I don't like to skimp on my haircut, so that costs $156. And then you can see everything else is pretty small comparatively speaking. So, a lot of one-off expenses in the January budget, if you can't tell. And then 276 on vacation, I bought a plane ticket to go to Austin, so can't wait for that one at the end of February. And then $100 um, under stuff I forgot to budget for, I just ended up um, giving $100 to a friend that needed it, so that's where that money went. If we go into food, I spent $144.20 on groceries, that's really great. I typically budget like 175, 180, so very happy with that. I spent 189.51 on dining out. I budget 125. I will say that this includes like um, a seventy dollar charge for dinner, but I got reimbursed for it. So by my friends. So if you take that out, I'm right around 125 or so. So it's not too bad really. Health and fitness, I spent $205.37, I spent $57.30 on the gym, and I actually canceled the gym membership. It's still going to show up in my February budget report, but starting in March, I'm not going to be paying almost $60 for a gym that I just don't get in $60 worth of value out of, so that'll, that'll be great to lower that budget goal. I think I will join a community center. Think like a YMCA, um, but it's not a YMCA, but that kind of style place where for $60 a year, I can just use a basic gym there and it does everything I need and it's walking distance from where I live. Other than before, for $60, I had to get on the highway. It just wasn't, I'm not that kind of, not that dedicated. I need it to be as close as possible <laughs> if I want to work out. And then I spent one forty eight oh seven on medical um, two medical bills from last year I had to pay. Yeah, they waited until now to bill me, and then I bought some medical supplies and some subscription, no, prescriptions. So, that was a little frustrating. I feel like I put a lot of money into medical, and then I end up spending a lot of money, but maybe I just need to put more in, I guess, if I really want to build up that category. Um, utilities. <laughs> So when I changed my budget categories, this was my favorite. I, I don't know if I'm just stupid or what, but like I when I put in the utilities category, I'm like, this makes so much more sense. I don't know why I was doing it like that other way. So I can clearly see, whoops, clicked on the wrong one. But I can clearly see if I can figure out which one goes to which. No. <laughs> now I can clearly see my utilities. I spent 37.13 on my phone. Um, I changed my phone plan from unlimited to like a 10 gigabyte plan. I work from home. I just don't need, I don't use, after like a few months of using the unlimited plan, I realized I don't even reach 10 gigabytes a month of data usage. So I thought might as well save $10 and go down to a 10 gigabyte per month plan. And then eventually once I've had my phone, I've had, I have it with straight talk. Once I'm there with a year, I believe I can, it's unlocked. And I might consider just taking it to Mint Mobile because it's significantly cheaper. Um, but until then, I'm spending $37 on my phone, $26.93 on electric. Um, no, nothing really to say there. 
And then 5089 on gas. I have gas heat and I have a gas stove in my apartment. Um, so this is the first, the last couple months it's been about $50 because it's just colder out. <laughs> Who would have thought? It's just cold in the Midwest. And um, I'm not too... I'm not too upset about it. At first I was, but then I was like, it is what it is. Like, electric has gone down, gas has gone up. It's just an ebb and flow. Internet is a flat $54.99 each month. Keep going here. Investments. I spent $125 and went to my, towards my Roth IRA. So, happy about that one. And then fun was $51.28. I don't even remember what I bought. Okay, I did a movie rental. I got a subscription to Big Ten Plus. I just bought one month to watch some gymnastics meets. And then I bought some gymnastics tickets on Ticketmaster for $32. So, not too bad. And then the last category is just subscriptions. So, I just have two subscriptions. I have Spotify for ten seventy four, and I have Apple storage for 99 cents so not too upset about that pretty cheap overall so total spending for the month 36 well three thousand six hundred nine dollars and one cent so it was a pretty expensive month compared to my income but with that being said a lot of it was planned for at least partially if not fully like my um plane ticket I had that in the vacation fund medical I had it in the medical fund um the only really things I really had to like switch the budget around for was the bike so I had to like skim some money off of each like category and um what's the other one? Oh, when I sent a hundred dollars to my friend but I I would do that any day of the week um if it meant I could help someone help a best friend that needed it but so Nothing I'm upset about. Um, to finish off the video here, I thought maybe I would just go over my tracking accounts a bit. Um, taking a look here, I have, oh gosh, I have three retirement accounts. I have a Robinhood account. I just put $50 in there once. And I have my car on here. So, I should technically have my student loans on here, but... I don't just, I just don't need that negative energy so I just don't have them on here I might add them once I actually once they're actually in repayment value of my car I'm just leaving at fifteen thousand dollars it's I bought it for like sixteen thousand in 2020 and when I look it up like online honestly my car they're like selling it for like two as high as like 19 to 20 to 21,000. So I don't ever plan on selling this car. You'd have to pry it out of my cold dead hands cuz I put so much effort into paying this thing off. But if I did, it would probably if I did it tomorrow, it'd probably sell for closer to $20,000. It's been in great condition since I bought it. All that being said, the balance this value could be higher, but I just don't update it. I'll update it if it starts going down past fifteen thousand, but until then, I'm just gonna leave it at fifteen thousand. If we look at Robin Hood, I don't put any money into this account. Um, maybe sometime in the future I will, but I don't really have an interest in doing so. Um, so as you can see, I just added this in here. There was a loss, so it was about fifty two ninety nine before. Now it's forty nine fifty. My four fifty seven B. This is from my last job in public employment. I also don't put money into this. It's a little all over the place because it's since it's such a small amount of money, I just have it in growth stocks. Um, so on Tuesday, on February 2nd, I updated it and I lost $19. So as we know, the market was kind of all over the place uh, last month. It is what it is. My Roth IRA, this is really exciting to me. I finally broke $1,000. I put in 125 There was a bit of a market loss for just under $40. But with all that being said, um, my contribution took over $1,000. So I'm thinking by the end of the year, assuming the market doesn't crash and burn, um, even if it stays pretty stagnant or just kind of like up and down like it is lately, 
I could reach at least $2,000. So that would be fun. It's nice to see progress in that account. I started it, oh, I want to say in February or March of last year. So I started gradually increasing my contributions as well. So hopefully next year I can keep increasing it. And then my biggest account is my 401a. I have been contributing to this account since 2016. It's been part-time contributions in public employment. And now I have a full-time job in public employment. So I contribute 10% of my salary no matter what um, every month. So I get from my full-time job to be specific. So... I make a flat, I usually make a flat $3,000 every month on the dot, so you see $300 goes in. I don't have the interest added because they just haven't credited it to my account yet. Don't know what they're doing there. Sometimes, it's so slow. The contributions and the interest is so slow, but something exciting about this account is that at the end of this year, assuming I don't like rage quit my job, I will be at five years in public service. I've worked longer than that, but they prorate your service credit if you're part-time. So I'll be at five years in public service, and my um, value of my account will go up. I'll finally get a match, a partial match. So I'm thinking by the end of this year, I might be even, I might be close to like 15000 in this account. I feel like that's not bad for a pension account at 23 years old. We just have to see if I make it there or not. <laughs> So total value of my tracking account is just under 24000 If we go into my net worth, um, I don't, the net worth section isn't very useful for me right now because it doesn't paint an accurate picture um, since my student loans aren't in there. But generally speaking here, from December to the beginning of February, which is now, my value of my account has gone down by about $1,000, which makes sense because I spent like almost a thousand I spent a, like almost a thousand dollars more than what I made so it is what it is in February income wise it should be slightly higher not significantly but definitely slightly higher and I have a some overtime that might be paid out from my full-time job or it might be paid out in March and I plan on filing my taxes that would probably be like a couple hundred dollars. But I also think ex um, my expenses are going to stay high because I go on vacation at the end of this month and I'm not going to be penny pinching the vacation. I refuse to. I'm saving money for it, so I'm going to spend it. I don't, I'm not going to frivolously spend all of it, but I'm not going to guilt myself and try to save every dime on a vacation. So I would not be surprised if my spending also trends high in February. All that to be said, once March rolls around, I'll have two focuses for as far as like my money goes. It'll be currently I'm foc I take a I took a break from my student loan savings because why not? If Biden gives you throws you a bone, you might as well take it. Um so I've been saving, I've been splitting my savings if you watch my budget videos between typically my emergency fund and my vacation fund. Um, so that'll continue through February and then in March I will do my emergency fund and I'll be back on student loan savings. So I'll talk about that more then. Um, yeah, so that is my January budget review. This is my first time doing this video, so sorry if it's a little all over the place. I thought it was quite helpful for me to go back and actually look at my budget and analyze it. If I want to know how you did on your budget in January, did you do a, <laughs> did you overspend like I did um, or did you kill it? Like, let me know. Um, finally, I just want to say thank you if you've been watching my videos. I really appreciate it and I wasn't expecting a lot of people to watch them. Um, I guess there's not like a million people watching these, but it's more than zero, so which I, was what I was expecting. Um, so, yeah. Uh, January's been a rough month. I hope February's better. Um, I hope February's a good month for you. And thank you so much for watching. 
I will see you next week for my uh, first paycheck of February. I'll be budgeting that. Anyways, have a good one. Bye.